Jennifer, and I'm so glad to have you back here. If this is your first time, welcome. I am so happy to have you here. I am a narcissistic abuse survivor, and I am, I guess what they call a codependent or a recovering codependent, because I definitely think I'm still on my journey to um, healing. I do get triggered, so I don't want people to think that I'm better than anybody else or anything like that. I'm going through it right along with you. I may be in a different spot, but um, along the way, however, I am right there with you and I'm just letting you know that you're not alone and you are supported. We are around narcissistic people, narcissistic people every day of our lives. If you're out in the public, you're around narcissistic people. And so it's good to be aware and know the red flags when someone is um, approaching you, talking to you, coming into your life, especially more than for just a little bit of time. We need to protect ourselves. We need to know how to create our boundaries. And once you know how to create your boundaries, it does help because a narcissist, when they see that you will create those boundaries around you, they know that you're not someone who can be easily manipulated, and so they may not hang out as long. So that's actually really good for you, right? And so that's what we want. We want people to be aware so that they don't get caught up in the web of the narcissist where the narcissist starts controlling you and you become trauma bonded and then we are crying all the time over a narcissist. And so I'm here to support you, and I'm really happy that my last video did help some people. Thank you so much for reaching out and your comments. I do appreciate all of your comments on my page, as long as they're respectful. If they're not respectful, unfortunately, I'm going to have to let you know that you're not gonna be welcome here if you aren't um, respectful to the channel. You know, I know I'm talking on narcissism and I know that I can attract um, some narcissists as well. And so narcissists are bullies and so they, um, can creep in and try to bully, but I'm not going to tolerate that. However, if a narcissist did come to my channel and was respectful, um, I'm happy to try to answer questions if I can. I mean, I am not a psychologist. I can't diagnose anyone. And um, so I, you know, I can't do that, but I can, you know, try to answer questions if, um, if it's something that I know about. I mean, I've definitely been in narcissistic relationships. I definitely have narcissistic traits myself. We all do. And so I'm happy to have, um, you know, conversation with um, anybody as long as you are respectful on this channel. So thank you so much. I really am here to support the victims of narcissism. And so if you are a narcissist, just know that I don't hate you at all. I do not hate anyone. I just don't like what you do. So um, you may be someone who is a narcissist and you're just curious about what we're talking about. And maybe you even are wanting to make some changes. And um, hopefully that's why you're here. I certainly wouldn't want to think that you were here for manipulative reasons, right? So um, anyway, I'm, I, I don't hate anybody. I think we all come with good in us or good traits. Um, I know that we talk about narcissists and it sounds like it's a really nasty, mean thing sometimes and like they just have nothing good about them, but we did fall in love with them or we do like hanging out with them. Narcissistic people can be quite fun to hang out with. And um, so maybe just not having a love relationship with, uh, that could be a little bit difficult, I'm sorry to say to the narcissist, but I, um, I have to because I have been in relationships like that before and they are very, very difficult. Um, but I'm happy to have you all here. And so tonight I wanted to kind of just kind of go on with um, talking about what it is like to be in a relationship with a narcissist. And that is what I have experience with. And I have experience with it um, in my romantic relationships before my past. I have um, lots of experience with it and without within my life. And if you really are someone who is a magnet for a narcissist, then 
if you become more aware, you will start to recognize who is more narcissistic or has high narcissistic traits in your life or that are coming into your life because narcissistic people really do like certain types of people. And um, so you can be a narcissistic um, magnet for um, people like this and you do need to be careful and create your boundaries. And if you create your boundaries, narcissistic people, I mean, they recognize, they well, they don't like boundaries and they certainly do try to cross them and they try to see how easily it is to manipulate and cross those boundaries. So they'll test, test, test to see if you'll give in. But if you're someone who holds your boundaries, they will back off and you know know that you're just not that type of person who's easily manipulated and they'll move on to someone who's a lot easier to manipulate. So if you're attracted to narcissists, sometimes it can be like, oh wow, that really sucks, you know, they're not attracted to me. But thank your lucky stars that they're attracted to somebody else and pray for the other person um, that ended up getting entangled with them. But it would just mean that you've gotten good at holding your boundaries, which is so hard to do, especially later in life when you have been someone who's let people cross those boundaries time and time and time and time again. So um, last time I was here, I was talking because one of my commenters was going through a lot and I'm hoping that she is feeling much better after the weekend. I'm praying that you did do some things for yourself and, you know, tried not to think too much about what the narcissist is doing because I promise you it's all smoke and mirrors. If a narcissist has dumped you and they've moved on to someone else, it is not everything that you think it is. It isn't anything that you did wrong, but the narcissist definitely wants you to think that they're doing fantastic without you, that life is just so wonderful, and that, you know, if they have somebody new in their life, they are, you know, wanting you to be jealous and feel, you know, bad that you weren't the one who, that, they, they're with and that they've chosen this other person and they want to make everything look happy hunky-dory but that's not necessarily the case it's just them you know pretending and they're doing it for a reason and the main reason is to hurt you especially if you were the one who was just in the relationship with them and most people don't recognize that i certainly know this for myself as i said before i've said in other videos where i had to watch something play out and you just have to tell yourself not to do it and remind yourself every single day what life was really like with the narcissist we do like to think about you know the good times we want to hold on to that. We don't want to think of people in a bad way. And so we always tend to go to the really nice things and how we really want to get it back to that and what happened and what is it that we did, you know, to make them not want to be with us anymore and why are they doing all those things with the new source of supply that, you know, they should be doing with me. I mean, I definitely have thought like that. I know I... Um, had a life planned out before and thought my life was going to be a certain way, especially now at the, you know, where I'm at now. And we had planned all these things. And then eventually I watched them play out with other people and I had worked so hard. I mean, tirelessly worked, um, which I've always been a hard worker. So it wasn't like, you know, um, you know, anything changed in that way. It's just that I thought that um, the way we had planned things that my life would get easier and it did not, you know, I, I'm still working super hard, but I have dignity and self-respect and I am so glad that I didn't give up things that, um, you know, was asked of me earlier on in my relationship. And so, you know, this was a moons, 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 moons ago, but I definitely did see things differently for me um, for this time in my life. But one of the things I can tell you is that even though my life isn't exactly the way I had imagined it being, it is probably better. I mean, I'm happier than I have ever been in my lifetime. I feel so um, much more secure in my life. I feel more confident. And so things may not have turned out exactly the way I thought, but a lot of things turned out a lot better. 
And so it's okay if things don't turn out exactly the way that you imagined it, because you can make your life anything that you want it to be. You know, you can cry and mourn forever, or you can pull up your bootstraps and find you again and do what it is that you love to do and spend time with the people that you love spending time with and taking the time to really getting to know you. And then you won't have to do a lot of the things that you didn't like doing with the narcissist, which is a lot of things. There's so many things. And, you know, I hear about, um, this one comes up a lot and I have brought it up before. It does kind of make me uncomfortable, but I do try to touch on it. But sex is one of the things that comes up a lot when we talk about narcissistic people. And this is where narcissists will really try to, depending on the type of narcissist that they are, to cross your boundaries. And if you're a really nice person or you really don't want to lose the relationship, you may do some things that you really wouldn't normally ever do. And so you will try things and, um, and it might make you feel bad about yourself later. It might not be in the moment, but it might be that you do later. I have heard so many different things, um, from different people to, um, uh, uh, like swingers, um, where their partner wanted them to, um, I guess, I'm not, you know, like be with other partners, um, I guess their partners. And um, so I don't know if it would be three or four, I guess that all of it would be swinging. I'm not really sure how exactly that all works, but that would be something that could happen. Or it could be that they might want you to have a threesome with, you know, some stranger from a bar. Um, it could be that they want you to dress a certain way that makes you uncomfortable or do certain things that make you really uncomfortable. Um, uh, some narcissistic people, um, can be like massage. I think they are anyway, but, um, I think it's called misogynistic, misogynist, misogynist. Sometimes I can't say the words. <laughs> Lord. Oh, it is what it is, right? <laughs> I'm just going with it. But, um, and so they can have some weird kind of things. Like I've heard about them, like not wanting you to talk. Narcissistic people or sociopaths, they cannot connect to you emotionally. And I talked about that in the last video where we want to connect so emotionally to them. And so they mirror back. Um, to us ourselves and so we're basically falling in love with ourselves which sounds so crazy but they are they're mirroring back how we are and they know that that's you know what we like and they love it because you are adoring them and you are in love with them and they can see that in your eyes and that just ignites something in them you know, they, they see it and they're like, she or he loves me. I'm everything to her or him. And this makes me feel very special. And I need to feel that way because on a deeper level, unfortunately, they don't feel that way about themselves. You know, they're like, it's like almost like a split personality, but not, but you know, you've got their vulnerable side and then the narcissistic side and the narcissistic side won't allow them to stay vulnerable very long. Um, and so the narcissistic side will always come out and come forward and, and, and it's like, it's protecting them, but they don't really need to be protected anymore, but they think they do because this is how it's that ingrained in them from their childhood. It comes from some form of abuse that they had when they or children and there's so many different types of abuse that can happen and so you will hear this repeated time and time again when you hear um, my videos or other people's videos and um, again I'm not a psychiatrist or psychologist but um, I have endured it and I've been close to or as close as you can get to um, some narcissistic people in my life and I did care for them very much 
And it isn't that I don't anymore. It's just that I don't allow, I don't want them to hurt me anymore. And they, um, we would never work out anymore because I wouldn't put up with their crap, you know what I mean? And I think some know that, you know, and I don't think that they think bad of me, but um, I also do know that, um, you know, I speak about this and because a narcissist can't get vulnerable or too close to you, they might, but then they, they run, you know? Um, because it makes them very uncomfortable. And when you can see who they really are, it makes them really uncomfortable. And so it's hard for them to be around you. And it's very unfortunate because you could know someone almost um, when you're aware and you're in a relationship with them more than probably anybody ever has, but they don't like themselves and they don't want people to see that. And so when people see it, they have to go. It's just the way they protect themselves. And it's hard to understand that and wrap your head around it. And it's so painful when they leave because you've invested so much into these people. You trusted them. They ended up betraying you. But the truth is they feel like you betrayed them. And it is one of the most confusing things ever to try to explain and so I know it's it's difficult but just know that it's not your fault it's not your fault and part of me I mean and a psychologist could maybe answer this but there's a part of me I really do believe that deep down um maybe depending on the type of narcissist but um Maybe their vulnerable side really does know, but that narcissistic side of them just can't accept responsibility for things that they've done. They can't look at it. They need to blame someone and they do treat the people closest to them the, the worst and it happens time and time again. So don't be jealous of the person that they moved on um, from. And again, it doesn't matter how old they are. It doesn't matter what they look like. It doesn't matter the race. It doesn't matter what they told you before. If they said they didn't like bigger people, and then the next thing you know, there was someone who's 30 pounds heavier than you. It doesn't matter skinnier. It doesn't matter the color. Whatever it is that they told you, it doesn't matter. They will go and be with whoever gives them the most narcissistic supply. Whatever it is that they need, they go to those people and they use them in the time that they need them. And when they don't need them anymore, they do discard. And it does feel like being thrown out like trash, like you're just dirty trash that they don't need anymore. And it's because that's pretty much what they do to you. Now, they're not going to admit that. And you can write them. You can call them. You can beg them. You can stand in front of them and try to rationalize all day long. You can cry. You can yell, you can try to give every example in the world. They will deny, deflect, project, blame, shift. They will do all of these things to try to make you feel bad about yourself. That actually reminds me of a commenter because a commenter had um, thrown those words out at me. And, um, you know, we all do have narcissistic traits and some they were trying to say something to me about something because I had said that I hadn't, uh, that I wasn't on something or whatever. And anyway, I wasn't. And um, it'd been years since I had done that and, or looked at whatever this page or whatever that this blog page that they were talking about. And they were um, saying something about a video that I did. And I was like, well, yeah, I did that. I mean, you know. Um, so sometimes people will try to turn it on you and try to make something that it isn't. And you have to just question like, okay, you don't have to be getting arguments with people. You don't have to fight with them, but you can just go, okay, why would this person feel this way? You know, it does it come from a place of um, that they're projecting because they're just upset with someone else? 
Is it because they're jealous and they think that you have something that they didn't? So, you know, I, I kind of try to look at things like that. It's like, where is this coming from? Where's all this coming from? And sometimes you can work things out that way. But honestly, if it's not a rational person, you're not gonna be able to work things out with them. And you just have to move on. And, um, you know, a narcissist, that type of person, they, you're never, they have to win the arguments. They have to win the arguments and they, um, They feel so bad about themselves. They have to make you feel bad. I know that sounds crazy, <laughs> you know, because it kind of is, but it's just the way they know how to cope with things. And sometimes they do things and then they don't, they can't come back from it. And so they do things that even hurt themselves sometimes because they had to win something. So they may have in that moment or thought that they did, but later it's like it messes them up somewhere else and then they're kicking themselves. It's just, it's so bad and it's unfortunate because you wish that they could go and get some therapy and it would all be okay again and you could make, have a life with someone like this. But unfortunately, I'm not saying that you can't, I'm just saying that it's not going to be what you imagined. You're going to have to give up so much of what you ever wanted and you're going to have to do things that you may not want to do or it's going to be a constant battle in your household. So, you know, um, yeah, they, so, you know, I was talking about sex just a minute ago. I mean, there's things, you know, um, I remember there was, I might have talked about this on this channel. I'm not sure if I have or not. But where someone one time they wanted, they liked when I was sad and crying and they, when, if I had like black eyes, like my makeup running down my face, that's when they wanted to have sex with me. And they, they would actually, even there were times where they asked me to actually do my makeup like that. It was a power trip for them. I could not wrap my head around it. It was, um, degrading, um, I was made to do things that I didn't, you know, it's like you have to have sex when you don't want to. Um, and you become resentful of those people. And so, um, I know what it, I, I mean, because it's so hard for me to even talk about it's triggering and I'm thinking of how to say certain things and even within my own life. And I'm thinking, I'm envisioning certain things in my head. So that's why I think I do that a lot because I don't know what to share and what not to. Sometimes I don't feel comfortable. You know, I'm trying to do the best I can um, in my own life. But I, I also give examples of things that I've heard from other people. And so it's unfortunate, but you can um, end up doing things that make you feel degraded and getting into things that you probably never would have done before um, you had gotten involved with that person. And you're just trying to keep up with them. You're trying to keep them from leaving you. Let's be honest. We don't want them to leave us. And so we are just trying to basically perform and be what they want us to be. And you never know what that is from day to day. And it can be so confusing. And that's how we end up losing so much of ourselves is because we're trying to be whatever it is that they need us to be. And that day, it reminds me of that movie, um, The Step of Stepford Wives. And you end up being almost robotic and just miserable, just absolutely miserable when you were a very happy person when you came into the relationship and they just sucked the happiness right out of you. And it appears that they all of a sudden are that person. And you're like, how the heck are they having all the happiness, everything that I always wanted? And I'm left with this dirty baggage that they left and, and we resent that, right? But we need to move away from that because deep down, um, that's not really true. It's smoke and mirrors. They're making people think that that's true, but it's really not. Whatever it is that they're showing on the outside, I promise you, 
as you know, if you've been in these relationships long enough, it isn't exactly the way it appears. It just isn't. And, uh, you know, um, narcissistic people too, especially, I, I can't say, I can only say about men. I'm sure guys, if you want, you can um, speak up and let's hear in the comments about what you think about women and how they talk about um, their partners. But I know, um, for example, uh, a partner that I had would always just treated me almost like a slave, like, and would be like, um, and throw me to the wolves. I remember one time, you know, saying I was trying to rest, you know, I worked all the time. I mean, I've always worked since I was a really young person. So this could have been any relationship I was in, but, um, and, um, it was time for me to finally have vacation and relax or whatever. And I was finally feeling after a few days, like, okay, I can finally relax. And it was like, he, this person kept throwing things at me. We had all these guests and they kept throwing, oh, she'll do it or she'll do it. And, you know, I'm like making, you know, uh, pancakes for like 25 people and I'm like you, know, you need to help me with this that's not okay to just expect that but that's what they were and funny because later I heard them say some things about um their next partner and I happened to be around and I could see that they were doing the same thing with their um with the partner that they were with at that time and I was like oh that poor girl. She's having to do a lot of the same things and with a smile on her face or otherwise um, to everybody else or like, you know, what's up with her? She's Why is she being such a witch with a bee in front? And is she just not friendly or, you know, is she jealous? Because you never know what the narcissist is saying. It's like, oh, she's just jealous, you know, because I have friends. And you know, they could be saying anything behind your back. And really, it's like, no, I'm constantly stepping and fetching. And this person treats me like a slave. I have to cook when they tell me to. I have to shop when they tell me to. I have to dress the way they tell me to. I have to have sex the way they tell me to. I have to speak the way they tell me to. I have to be on guard at all times and people don't realize it. They have absolutely no idea. If they paid attention a little bit more, they might would, but um, they're usually having too much fun and, um, and just a different position than you are with the narcissist. And if they got a little bit closer, then they might would notice, but they may not say anything even if they did because they wouldn't want uh, the narcissist to turn on them, or they may not um, get some of the perks that they might get with a narcissist. Because some narcissists are very um, uh, well off and do really well, and then there's other ones that, you know, you can't even get them to get a job, and they're using everybody around them and making every excuse not to have a career or a job, and they're always having to be taken care of. And so either way, it doesn't matter. Um, you can be a narcissist, whether you're rich or not, and you can be with one of all different um, types. You can be with the type that, you know, uh, commit all kinds of crimes or are in and out of prison and or jail. And um, some are just emotionally abusive. Some are um, emotionally abusive and will um, abuse you physically. So I think of O.J. Simpson. He always is somebody that I think of when I think of um, a narcissist who was both very controlling. And he always is like one of the first that comes to mind for me. But um, wherever you are in this relationship, basically, if you're still with one, you're constantly trying to figure out, should I stay? Should I go? I love them. It hurts when I leave. Like I'm gone a couple of days and then... I'm missing them and I want to go back and yet everybody's looking at me like I'm crazy and then I'm making excuses for them and it's because I want to go back and I don't want people to think bad about them and then everybody's thinking bad about me and thinking I'm the crazy one and that's exactly how that works. It is. That's how it works and it's because you're trauma bonded. It is because you are trauma bonded to someone and the chemical process that's going through your body it's like trying to detox off of drugs or alcohol. And it is just a person. And people who have never been in a relationship like that do not understand. But they will, as long as we keep spreading awareness and letting them know that you can be addicted to a person 
and there are people out there that do manipulative things to get you addicted to them. It is true. And if you go to like HG Tutor site, um, he talks about that even. I mean, if you can control the mind, you have a person wrapped around your finger exactly the way they want. You just have to figure out what it is that that, that uh, they like, what they need, what their wants are, and then you present it to them and you create this facade and make believe that they can have that through an experience with the narcissist and then the narcissist makes that happen or it makes it appear that way for a while and then once they have you they start to pull away then they come back and then so they give and take and you get that pull, push pull and it's so confusing and you end up working so hard to try to keep them and yet you know you need to be away from them and when they um and then they keep coming back. And when they do, they always pretend like they just act like nothing happened. And you're like, like, no, like we need to talk about this. No, the narcissist, the narcissist wants this. They want you to be quiet and just do as they want and be the way they want them to in the moment that they want you to be that way. And so you basically are an object to them. And that's hard for people to believe that people can be out there and be that way but it's true and it happens every day we see it every day all you have to do is watch the news um watch youtube even watch crime shows or um watch reality tv you know you don't even have to do that you can go into people's homes or hang out in a group of people and so you know um you will heal from this if you want to. You can stay if you want to. I'm not trying to judge you at all. So anybody who comments here, just know that I understand. I do care about you. Um, and so I would just recommend to anybody, no matter where you are in the process, work on those boundaries. Work on your self-esteem. The more you work on your boundaries and the more you hold your boundaries, the more you will respect yourself. And believe it or not, the more people will respect you. You can do this. I know that you can. And so um, maybe I should do a video on um, boundaries and how we can create boundaries. Let me know what you think. Uh, talk to me in the comments. Please be respectful. If you're coming here trying to bully, you might be blocked off the channel. I hate to do that to you, but just know that I might have to do that. But otherwise, I'm open to comments. Let me know what you think. What do you want to talk about? What are some of your experiences with a narcissist when it comes to sex? Give me some of those. Let's talk about some of that. And um, next time, I will um, maybe answer some of those questions or bring it up. Okay? Until next time, bye. Take care.